Hi everybody, it's Craig from the University of Applied Research and Development. Welcome to our Leaders Podcast. And we have with us Dr. Jason Morrison, who is the Chancellor of Southern Arkansas University Technical. Thank you so much for being with us very early in the morning. Oh, glad to be here. I wouldn't miss it. I love talking about education and love uh, promoting SAU Tech. Well, look, you're very unique in your role that you have and the organization and the location that it actually is. So why don't you tell us about the location and the system and what it is that you're leading? Uh, we are a part of a, uh, in Arkansas, uh, we have systems of higher education where you have often four-year universities that are in partner with two universities. And so we are part of the Southern Arkansas University system. We have a four-year university located in Magnolia, Arkansas, which is actually about 45 minutes away from this campus. And SAU Tech is kind of the two-year university, uh, part of that system that focuses very heavily on career and technical education, along with uh, transfer education and workforce training. And our institution is very unique as we actually set in the middle of the largest privately owned industrial park in the United States. Uh, Camden, Arkansas, and the campus is actually located in East Camden, Arkansas, sits in the middle of the defense industry in the state of Arkansas. So right outside my walls here uh, are companies like Aerojet, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, NTS, Armtech, Gerald Dynamics. Uh, we literally stand in defense of a nation in, in this campus as we, we produce workers that work in the defense industry. And so it's, it's kind of unique to, to have a, a college that is really immersed in, a, in the kind of the manufacturing sector. Uh, and, and, and we have a vital role, which was the reason her whole existence came about. Uh, our campus used to be a naval base back in the 40s. That's, that's how the campus came about. It was constructed as a naval ammunition depot called Schumacher Naval Base. And then when the Naval Base was decommissioned, uh, a family came in and took over the kind of the property and started the development into uh, the defense industry. And and that's how the the campus came about is because they needed an educational institution to provide workers and a workforce to support the growth of the defense industry. And so our college was created in 1968, um, known as Southwest Technical Institute. And as it it, uh, grew and merged with the Southern Arkansas University system, it became SAU Tech. So we we literally will produce workers that will go into quality control, non-destructive testing, and manufacturing of rocket motors, missile defense shields, many things like the THAAD missile defense uh, shield, or most people have heard of Tomahawk missiles, all made here in in Camden. Um, I I know I have colleagues that talk about when they see defense contract issues, we see million and billion dollar contracts. That happens on a weekly basis here in East Camden, Arkansas. (laughs) So we definitely have a vital role as an institution because this supports a major sector of the Arkansas economy, but also our nation's economy. And of course, the protection of our nation. And those things get sold across the world in protection of many nations uh, by what's being produced here. How, how important is it in your leadership role that you liaise with people in the industrial area and with these companies and develop those relationships as the leader of Celtic? Uh, it, it's extremely important because we have to know that we're in line with the, their needs. We have to know that we're producing the students that have the, the technology capability, the learning capabilities uh, to move right into that workforce. Uh, matter of fact, earlier this week, I, I had a meeting with one of the directors and we were talking about partnerships and, and creating uh learning labs on our campus that uh, mimic the production floors. And we have partnerships uh, that we've already created with other industries in the park where they have actually created a learning center on our campus that we can engage in workforce training 
uh, to ensure that, you know, if they hire someone, they come to SAU Tech and we go through a series, different series of and different levels of workforce training to prepare them to be on the production floors because their job is extremely important. The smallest mistake um, can create havoc. And so we, we provide a lot of essential skill training uh, partnerships. We provide many levels of advanced training for after they go through essential skills, kind of continuation training to very customized training. Uh, and some of that time, sometimes that training leads to degree programs, like in the area of non-destructive testing, which is the digital x-ray of all these rocket motors and rocket parts and, and, and defense parts that they produce. All of it has to be x-rayed. And so we have, we started a workforce training with materials donated from one of the industries and, and it grew into students going, I would like a degree in that. And so we actually are the only school in the state of Arkansas and probably the only one within a six to eight mile radius that has a non-destructive testing program. So those students can come in and, and learn how to become uh, x-rayers, uh, digital x-rayers. And we have some of the kind of the older school radiography as well. Um, because as I was talking to one of our um, state representatives, state senators who served in the military, the men and women that serve in the military need to know that piece of equipment when the triggers pull, they don't hear it. it works and it functions. And so I try to press that upon the students that come in is this is bigger than who you are. I mean, you are, you're going into a, a field of study that millions of people are counting on you to do it right and, and to care about what you're doing and have a passion for it. How challenging is it for you to, switch your mind from these different industries and different requirements and maybe as you said before we started recording things that are not in your wheelhouse you know things that are different how, how challenging is that as a leader well it, it's all about growth you know here at SAU Tech we're not only a career and technical we are a transfer institution so students that are going into business administration teacher education uh, getting that first two years of any degree uh, that they would get at a four year, you know, that is, those students are, are a little bit different than those that may go into a career technical mindset, the welding student, uh, uh, nursing student, or non-destructive testing or mechanical maintenance, just kind of uh, different mindsets. But at the end, it's education. But also we have things like the Environmental Training Academy, which is involved in training municipalities and industries, be it wastewater, solid waste, I'm a political scientist by education. Uh, well, I guess you could say solid waste and wastewater might not be too far from political science, but, <laughs> uh, but what I do is I, I, I have to learn about it and I want to learn about it. If I'm going to represent it, and I think you know, this is something I know you're going to be visiting and, and, and sharing this with students that are going into education programs. If you're going to lead something, you need to know what you're leading. You need to be invested in it. And you need to, even if it's not your strength, you need to learn as much as possible so you can truly be a representative of what you're, you're advocating. And that's if it's the Environmental Academy or for us also the Fire Training Academy. You know, I go out and spend time with those men and women that are in rookie school that are learning how to put out fires and doing a night burn. Uh, I spend time with them and interact with them because you know what? they're serving our communities and they're protecting our community, you know? And so they, they need to know that I'm invested in them as well. And I appreciate what they're doing uh, because they're, they're in a dangerous job. And, and a lot of, a lot of our students are going into fields that, you know, there, there's danger to it, but there's so much reward to it in the end. You've mentioned a couple of times in this conversation so far your appreciation and your recognition of the value that your graduates hold when they're in these positions. And I think that's, that's quite unique and that's quite special and um, people must feel that. Is, that. is that something you've had to develop over time on your leadership journey, that understanding no, and recognition? No, I think it's, it's, it's just my makeup, how, how I was, you know, I'm probably different in that respect. Uh, 
I'm, I'm very hands-on. I'm not a macro manager, but I'm a macro involved. I want to know what's happening day to day with my people, with my students, because I, I want to know if there's a way to improve, you know? Um, uh, and I also want to know that I'm never going to have someone do something if I'm not willing to do it myself. If I expect someone to go out and build something or do this, I have to be willing to do that myself. And, and so it, a lot of it's by example, you know, uh, if I got people in the trenches that are doing something, well, I'm going to go out there and do it with them. I mean, kind of example, earlier this spring, we, we had a, a campus wide initiative to do some major cleaning and, and, and cleaning the buildings. Well, my wife and myself were out there pressure washing at six in the morning, housing, student housing buildings, you know, making sure that this campus is something that when parents bring their kids to drop them off to, that they can be, they're like, it's, it's a, it's a good campus. I feel, I feel it's a great decision that my child has decided to go to school here. And so if you're not willing to get out there in the trenches yourself, get a little dirty, a little grimy, then, then why are you doing it? You know, I mean, uh, be it if it's, we're, and it's a family affair, be it for pressure washing buildings or, or, building a softball field because, you know, two years ago we started athletics uh, and we literally had to start from scratch. And, uh, and that means get out there and get involved. And if it's going to be my vision to start athletics and build a softball field, but I better be the first one out there in the morning working on it. And, um, and that's what I did, you know, and when people see that they respond, um, people, People work as their leader works. And I think students that are going into to education and they one day want to be in a leadership role, they always need them to remember people will respond based on how they see you doing it. And if you're out there doing it, then people are going to get involved and they say, well, he's going to do it or she's going to do it. I'm going to do it with them because that's who I want to work with. Yeah, that's great. I'd love to hear your vision for your institution going forward. Uh, always growth, growth, growth. Um, but we're a small institution, you know, and I know there will be a plateau of growth. But I, I don't want anybody that works here or I work with to ever feel like there's a limit. Um, you know, as I've been in education for quite some time now, you know, you start transitioning into that – You're you're a leader, but you're also more of a mentor and a shape, uh, someone that's shaping future leaders. And I, I guess I'm getting into that part of my career where I spent a lot of times focus on shaping the next group of leaders because I can't do it forever. It, 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 is, it's, it is very tiring. It is very stressful. And especially in today's time with COVID-19 impacting us, it, it, it is. So I spent a lot of time, you know, I want to shape that next group of leaders because I feel like my legacy one day will never be about what I accomplish, but the people that come after me and what they accomplish. That's what I look forward to one day looking back on my career going, because I really don't care what I do. And half the time I forget the things that we have accomplished because I'm so focused on what can we do next. And that's what I try to instill in my people is, yeah, we did that. Today's a new day. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do next to push the, to pu push the higher education forward, improve the reputation of higher education, uh, not, not only inside the United States, but across the world, you know, and we always got to be willing to take a risk and chance chances. So I'd love to see our institution grow, of course, in enrollment, but also grow in, in our reach, you know, we're just not a small community college that serves just this surrounding area. We have students from all over the state of Arkansas, uh, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma. We, we've been able to start attracting students from further off uh, to come to this little institution that sits in South Arkansas in the middle of an industrial plant and lots of trees. <laughs> and, and so we got to continue to focus on growth. You know, making sure our programs are meeting the needs of students, that we're meeting the needs of our industries, and that we're providing workforce training that advance the economy. 
I'm a true believer with the economic impact that COVID-19 has had that community colleges are going to be the, the, the flame that kind of starts the fire, that starts the engine to economic regrowth. Uh, because I think we're more quick to respond based on workforce training needs. We've always been evolutionary in our nature and never kind of um, just stuck in kind of traditional ways of doing things. We've always been willing to kind of, if it has to be done different, we'll do it different. And so I think as we grow, uh, regrow economically, you're going to see the importance of two-year institutions that are both transfer and career and technical focus leading the way. And, and that's going to help the four years regrow as well during this time because it's providing them a student that's already seen success. And, and I think the four-year university growth will, will grow, continue, increase the grow, and we'll see growth not off – the, the kind of the historic traditional population, but the population of students that started at a two year uh, career and technical or transfer institution. So I don't anticipate us ever to not find a way to grow or find an opportunity. A lot of it's going to be different. It's going to be partnerships with industry. It's going to be partnerships with um, other universities uh, across the United States, across the world. One, one partnership, that I've tried to work on in the past at different institutions is partnering with a, a university in, an, in another country to provide educational opportunities and advancement so students can learn from each other. You know, that there's, there's multiple ways to, to reach an end goal and that you need partnerships and you need to kind of get outside of your comfort zone and experience things how other people are experienced so you can truly kind of appreciate or see opportunities of growth, uh, growth for yourself. Um, but let's hope the enrollment grows. Uh, let's hope that uh, we can grow the economy, which leads to more growth in enrollment. And, and then I think this institution will continue to prosper. Jason, in just a couple of minutes we have left, for people that are aspiring leaders, regardless of their industry, what would you say to them when they're thinking about what are the experiences that they need to build or attitudes or competencies what are one or two things you would advise them to build? Uh, I, would, I would tell them to always appreciate the moment that you're in. Um, I had a kind of a quick um, rise into administration. I taught, uh, I was an instructor for 11 years. It, I, I did not move into administration until 2011, and, and that's when I – um, accepted my first dean's position and I served as a dean for two years at my first institution then 11 months at the second one then became a vice president uh, then I served two and a half years as a vice president before becoming a chancellor um, I would say I would tell students that are aspiring make sure at each moment that you're at that you enjoy that moment and you appreciate that moment because I feel like um, I moved so quickly that maybe I missed opportunities of some growth um, and, and that's valuable. And so, you know, understanding that you're, you're at that position for a reason and to appreciate and to learn from that position because you don't want to, you don't want to go so quickly that you, you wish your life away because <laughs> it can go that way because you know, you, and you reach that goal, but you want to make sure that you don't miss out on a learning opportunity. And, and, I, and I think, and I, and I tell, like I said, I, I've kind of done a lot of transition where I feel like I am mentoring a lot of people and, and sharing, I'm not gonna say wisdom because it's far from wisdom, uh, but sharing experience to students and, and, and new leaders that, you know, embrace where you're at, learn everything that you can at that moment because it truly will prepare you even though nothing really prepares you for the next step, it does give you an infrastructure to kind of fall back on and rely on as you learn that next position. Uh, and, and always be willing to accept the challenges and never think the position's bigger than what the position is. I think sometimes we hear titles and we hear positions and we think 
this is what it encompasses. No one's bigger in a position and no, no position is bigger than anyone else. You know, my job is no more important than the people that, that keep my buildings clean, my, my grounds uh, looking nice, or the instructors that teach in the classroom. My position is no bigger than that position. If it wasn't for those positions, I wouldn't have the opportunity to be where I'm at. And I, you have to, as a leader, learn to appreciate what everybody does on your campus and be willing to pitch in if, if there's some reason they can't, if something happens and, and they need your help. Um, um, as I always tell people, be willing to clean the toilets, no matter what your position are, what your position is. Be willing to pitch in because they'll appreciate it uh, and people will see that and they know that you're invested in your institution and, and you have to be. And I, and I know people change jobs you know, throughout their career, but when you take a job, be all in. You know, put your heart into it, put your passion into it, and, and give of yourself completely for it because that's where the rewards come from, you know, is you're knowing you're, you're giving everything you can to see people grow. Because at the end of the day, the most enjoyable moment is watching the students walk across that stage. And, and this, you know, we, we serve a very low socioeconomic population. First generation, 80 plus percent of our students, first generation stu college students big deal and they deserve that recognition that it, it, it's a big deal and and they and that is the most enjoyable moment you can have in your career when you're in education is see those students walk across that stage and and knowing that wow their life is forever changed you've taken them out, out of whatever circumstance they might have, may have come from and given them opportunity to have a successful future and you can't beat that in our world Dr. Jason, thank you so much for your time and thanks for finishing with just expressing your great heart for the students that you lead every day and your staff. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you.